through the decades. Vision and Ideal Global Manifestation of Oneness and the Love of God and All People Mission To create opportunities for profound personal change in body, mind, and spirit through the wisdom found in the Edgar Cayce material. From the desk of Kevin J. Tedeschi, M.A. Executive Director and CEO Happy 90th Anniversary and Congress the history of ARE really began with the closure of the Edgar Casey Hospital, 1928 to 1931, in February 1931. The hospital had been Casey's lifelong dream, and when it closed, he felt lost, wondering what the future held. He wrote letters to all who had stood with him through the years and suggested a meeting, which took place on March 28, 1931, in the Casey home, bringing together approximately 60 supporters. The consensus was that the work needed to continue. Prior to the meeting, a reading suggested the name of the new organization, Association of Research and Enlightenment. Thomas Sugru, Casey's eventual biographer, suggested instead that it be called the Association for Research and Enlightenment, which was the name submitted with the application for state charter on June 6, 1931. That same month, Another reading suggested that the new organization should begin an annual tradition in which members from around the country could gather. The reading recommended that the event occur between June 15 and July 1, and that the purpose would be for these members to renew the faith, confidence, purposes, aims of the work itself. The annual event came to be called the ARE Congress. ARE was officially born with its incorporation date, July 7, 1931. The first Congress occurred the following year, from June 27 through July 1, 1932. With that in mind, 2021 is both the 90th anniversary of AIE and the 90th Congress event. For a non-profit organization to last 90 years is no small accomplishment. It has taken the dedication and support of literally thousands of members and volunteers. It has taken the determination an effort of hundreds of staff people. It has also taken the lifetime commitment of countless individuals who came before and provided the means for this great work to last through the Great Depression, a world at war, times of protests and times of change, ever-changing modes of communication and technology, the Great Recession, a pandemic, the list goes on and on. The names of these individuals are too numerous to mention. Still, I would like to mention three, who, in addition to Edgar Cayce, 1877-1945, founded a work that has literally changed the thought of humankind, Gertrude Cayce, Gladys Davis Turner, and Hewlin Cayce. Gertrude Cayce, 1880-1945, was the stabilizing influence in both the Cayce home and the Cayce work. She managed to raise a family, often in the face of adversity and lack, a lack of money, a lack of clients seeking her husband's help, and a lack of understanding from the then small Virginia Beach community as to what Edgar Casey was all about. It was her guiding presence as conductor of the majority of the readings that gave her husband faith his gift would not be misused while he was in the sleep state. She provided balance and stability and love and was at the heart of both the Casey home and the Casey work. Gladys Davis Turner, 1905 to 1986, served as Edgar Cayce's stenographer from 1923 until his death. At the age of 18, Miss Gladys, as Cayce called her, took notes on her first reading in Cayce's photography studio in Selma. Her ability to understand and keep track of his information was so impressive that she was hired permanently and began recording his psychic readings thereafter. The vast majority of the readings on file were taken down by Gladys. After Casey's death, it was Gladys who preserved the readings. From that time forward, she became the central historian and archivist and corporate secretary of the Casey legacy. She supervised cataloging and indexing the readings, making them available to an ever-growing audience. Over the years, her skills as a historian proved invaluable. Perhaps more than anyone, Hugh Lynn Casey, 1907-1982, to 1982, 
was responsible for taking AIE from its humble beginnings to an organization of international renown. Instrumental in developing widespread recognition and acceptance of subjects such as psychical research, dream analysis, meditation, and personal spiritual development, Hulin received critical praise for his first book, Venture Inward, after which this magazine is named. He was known for his commitment and enthusiasm for working with young people. A dynamic and popular speaker, he traveled the world for AIE and was responsible for its first strategic plan, the buying back of the Edgar Casey Hospital and the construction of AIE's library and conference center. In 1981, while speaking about AIE during the 50th anniversary, he shared his ongoing commitment to his father's legacy by asking those in attendance, how can you not share the best that you know? Happy birthday, AIE. Let's all share the best that we know. March 18, 1877. Edgar Casey was born eight miles south of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. 1890. As a child, Edgar was labeled strange. He often played with imaginary friends, was able to speak to his deceased grandfather, and could memoize books by sleeping on them. 1892. After completing eighth grade, Edgar quit school in order to help his family financially, giving up his dream to become a minister. March 1900. As a young adult, Edgar tried his hand at different jobs, including a bookstore sales clerk and insurance sales. Edgar loses his voice and is unable to speak above a whisper, work proves challenging. He takes an apprentice job in a Hopkinsville photographer's studio. Four years to come, his photography skills become his livelihood. March 31, 1903. Edgar gives his first psychic reading for himself. He diagnoses his own difficulties and regains his voice. Edgar then begins giving readings for other patients. June 17, 1903. Edgar Casey and Gertrude Evans were married in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, at The Hill, home of Gertrude's grandparents. They spend the next six years mostly in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Because people had misused Edgar's talents early on, eventually Gertrude would conduct the readings for her husband. March 16, 1907. Hugh Lynn, Edgar and Gertrude's first son, is born. December 1909. After fire destroys his Bowling Green, Kentucky, photography studio, Edgar pays back all debts incurred from the loss. The Casey family moves back to Hopkinsville, and Edgar continues to support the family by working as a traveling photographer. October 9, 1910. The New York Times publishes an in-depth article on Edgar Casey's psychic powers. Information from his readings pointed to Virginia Beach, Virginia, as the best place for establishing an institution. This becomes Edgar's mission. First recorded mention of Virginia Beach as a place for the work, reading 2546, May 8, 1924. In addition to opening a photography studio, Edgar forms the Psychic Reading Corporation. From 2541 Report For the first time, he gives daily readings on medical cases as a psychic diagnostician for patients of Dr. Wesley Ketchum. Historians may note, Casey was not a junior. March 28, 1911 Milton Porter, Edgar and Gertrude's second son, is born. Milton passes away two months later. Late summer 1911. Despondent after losing Milton, a weakened Gertrude develops tuberculosis. Unable to cure her, doctors tell Edgar, this monkey business you've been doing, you'd better try it on your wife. This marks the first reading for a family member. Edgar's reading helps save Gertrude's life. Ever since that day, when one so close to me was given back to me, I have looked upon all psychic phenomena with a different attitude. March 1912 Frustrated with associates in Hopkinsville, Edgar decides to move the family to Alabama, and they settle in Selma. He opens a photography studio, the readings remain a part-time endeavor. 
February 9, 1918. Edgar Evans, Edgar and Gertrude's youngest son, is born. 1922. From his travels and word of mouth, Edgar now spends much of his time giving readings and wildcatting in Texas to generate funds to build a hospital. Establishes Casey Petroleum Company in 1920 and drills for oil through 1921, spends 1922 lecturing in Birmingham, Alabama, Denver, Colorado, and Dayton, Ohio. September 10, 1923. Edgar hires a permanent secretary, Gladys Davis, 1905-1986, who was then 18 years old. She spends the rest of her life as part of the Casey family and devoted to the preservation of the Casey readings. If not for Gladys' work, Edgar would not be the most documented psychic of all time. October 11, 1923. A reading for Arthur Lammers mentions a past life and becomes the first life reading. Ultimately, more than 1,900 readings would explore reincarnation. November 1923 Edgar and his family, including Gladys, moved to Dayton, Ohio, at the invitation of Arthur Lammers. But their intended business venture falls short. Lammers gets into business difficulties and multiple lawsuits that drain his capital. September 16, 1925 Based on the reading's recommendations, the Edgar Casey family moves to Virginia Beach, Virginia, with the express purpose of building a hospital. Move financed by Morton and Edwin Blumenfall. May 6, 1927 Casey founds the Association of National Investigators, ANI. Its motto, that we might make manifest our love of God and man. 1928 Construction begins on the Casey Hospital of Research and Enlightenment. November 11, 1928 Construction is completed and the Hospital of Enlightenment is officially dedicated, a dream come true for Edgar. November 11, 1930 Atlantic University opens its doors as the first university founded in Virginia Beach. The university offered degree programs in pre-med, pre-law, pre-engineering, liberal arts, and fine arts. The cost for tuition, books, room and board was $475 a year. The first class had 209 co-ed students. February 28, 1931 in part due to the Great Depression, the Casey Hospital is sold and closed, and ANI is disbanded. But the Caseys and Gladys continue their work from the Casey home. July 7, 1931. Backed by family and friends, the Caseys incorporate the Nonprofit Association for Research and Enlightenment Incorporated, ARE. September 14, 1931. The first A Search for God study group meets. The original Glad Helpers prayer group grew out of this study group. After losing the hospital, the study group helps Edgar redefine his spiritual direction in relationship to his work. June 1932 The first annual Congress meeting occurs, establishing ARE headquarters conferences. July 1932 Atlantic University stops its activities, but the charter is kept alive, enabling the university to relaunch in 1986. June 1942 A Search for God is published, outlining individual steps from the Casey readings toward true spiritual growth. Today, A Search for God study groups meet around the world and online, bringing about astonishing change in the lives of participants. March 1943. Edgar Cayce's biography There is a River, by Thomas Sugru, is published. September 1944. Cayce gives his last reading, for himself. Reading 294202. January 3, 1945. Edgar Cayce dies of a stroke, two months before his 68th birthday.
At the time of his passing, Edgar was scheduled to give up to eight readings a day for the next two years. In his lifetime, he gave more than 14,000 readings. April 3, 1945. Gertrude Evans Casey dies of liver cancer at age 65. Fall 1945. Edgar Casey Publishing Company started. Today, ARE Press and Fourth Dimension Press continue this work. Edgar Casey Publishing Company disbanded in 1961 to form ARE Press. 1946. The ARE Library Reading Room and Lending Service opens, an early sign of Hugh Lynn's commitment to advocating for his father's work. February 1948. Hugh Lynn, Edgar Evans and Gladys established the Edgar Casey Foundation, chartered by the Commonwealth of Virginia. The foundation preserves the readings and related Casey historical resources for research and personal development. Nineteen fifty six. Hugh Lynn gets help. Robert Adrians donates 90% of the capital to buy the building, with the down payment, and the AIE regains ownership of the original hospital building. It had been used as a beach club, a hotel, Shriners Clubhouse, and a summer stock theatre. 1959. Beginning in the 1950s, Hugh Lynn Casey began lecturing throughout the country about the Casey work. His 1959 lecture tour encompassed 76 lectures in 26 cities. Today, AI continues to provide lectures throughout the US and Canada, and online at edgarcasey.org. Lydia Schrader Gray was the first official lecturer, then worked with Hugh Lynn Casey and Elsie Sacrist to build the speaker roster. Summer 1959 The first AIE camp is held. Hundreds of people annually, kids and adults, alike. Enjoy living a holistic lifestyle, infused with the deep meaning of Edgar Casey's spiritual ideals. December 1961 To advance the association's reach, a new campus building opens, propelling the AIE's publishing potential. 1963 Led by Hugh Lynn Casey, AIE sponsors a tour of the Middle East, Egypt, Israel, Greece and Rome, which becomes the first AIE tour. Today, AIE tours continue to offer annual treks to all parts of the globe. Europe, Asia, South America. 1967. The AIE Health Services opens to offer holistic therapies. Today, we know it as the AIE Health Center and Spa, which performs hundreds of massages and health services every week of the year. 1972. The Prison Outreach Program is started. Today, the program receives more mail than any AIE department and sends upon request more than 10,000 free books annually to inmates across the U.S. 1972. I give thanks for everything the source has revealed. In so few amount of years, without many peers to discuss my views outside of what most are used to. I humbly thank those of you who AI intuitive enough to create for us a home to help us, focus on the light that sustains us. Dream of a lifetime in the Orient, Haiku. Crossed swords, black and red this time, I'll make you my friend, not my enemy. Waiting and working, Haiku. God is on the move. Only four Christmases left then home to loved ones. March 30, 1975 After two years of construction, Hugh Lin's vision is realized when the new AIE Library Conference Center is officially dedicated. Now known as the Visitor's Center, it houses the AIE Bookstore and Gift Shop, the AIE Library, and the Meditation Room. 1977 Hugh Lynn and Charles Thomas Casey during a Congress week break, August 1977. 1979. Casey's approach to staying well focuses on maintenance and preventative medicine of mind, body, and spirit. 
The Journal of the American Medical Association takes note. The roots of present-day holism probably go back 100 years to the birth of Edgar Cayce. September 1984 First issue of Venture Inward magazine is published, serving members in a new way. 1987 The Massage School is founded. Eventually renamed Casey Riley School of Massage, today the school offers a renowned curriculum and has graduated more than 2,500 students from over 20 countries. 1989 Reopened as a graduate university in 1986, Atlantic University graduates its first class. Today the school offers accredited master's degrees in psychology and mindful leadership, along with several certificate programs. The decision to become a life member was one easy decision. Who wouldn't want to support such a soul growth organization, which I continue to support with monthly donations? I am also grateful for all the inspiration that I receive from the Thought for the Day messages. I also cherish the Venture Inward magazines, which I keep and reread regularly. I have a deep, heartfelt knowing that the knowledge of the universe that Casey tapped into whilst in trance is here to benefit us all. As a life member, the ARE often brings me back to center during my life's journey. I am so grateful that the ARE protects sustains, and encourages exploration into the many aspects of universal knowledge. I am so happy to be a part of this work. The AI will always be a part of my life. This material has changed my life for the better, and I wanted the outreach to continue for others to have that opportunity. The Edgar Casey material opened my eyes to a bigger view of life and why we are here. There is no greater honor than to have my children say, my mum was a life member of the AIE. The AIE has been my personal lifeline in a chaotic and confusing world. We feel that AIE is part of our family. We want to be associated with the AIE until we leave this world. The AIE has positively impacted my life helping me to get closer to God, improving my health, and also helping me with meditation and yoga. The AIE has been an important part of my life for 50-plus years. I cannot imagine what life would have been like for me without the Casey books, readings, concepts, conferences and ideas. The people in my life who are my closest friends are also Casey people. The Edgar Casey material and the AIE programming are resources has provided such a rich source of inspiration, direction, guidance and soul development for me. I knew I would be benefiting from Edgar Casey's work for the rest of my life. I wanted to contribute to the Casey work for as long as I was alive and even thereafter. I have no words to adequately describe what the AIE and the Edgar Casey material has meant to me throughout the years. Thank you to my beloved AIE for all that you have meant to me. I will never forget you or Edgar Casey. Becoming a life member was important to me to evidence to myself my personal commitment to the spiritual work that will occupy my body-mind-spirit for the rest of my life. The AIE is everything to me. In a very real sense, even though it so sounds overly dramatic, it literally saved my life. The Casey readings were life-changing for me. The influence of the readings, meditation, philosophical, dream interpretation, and health resources, have been a tremendous resource. The readings of Edgar Casey and my involvement with the ARE are the two most important things in my life. I became a life member to do my part to ensure the continuation of the work for future generations. This work has been my anchor, my sword of shield, and my salvation on this earth journey. The person I am after almost 50 years of seeking is a result of the ARE. The Casey materials are, in my opinion, the greatest material given to man that is available today. It answered all of the questions that I had about my life and life in general. The Casey material absolutely changed my life for the better. This organization gave me hope, and my life has been better ever since. 2003
The ARE Hospital Building on the Dune is designated a landmark with the City of Virginia Beach Historical Register. 2006. Charles Thomas Casey retires on December 1st. Kevin J. Tedeschi becomes Executive Director and CEO. Tedeschi announces plans to renovate the Casey headquarters and to digitize every component of the Casey work, creating an online database to research the Casey readings. Not every document is digitized. Edgar Casey Foundation currently planning a digitization program for the original documents. 2014. The $30 million CREATE campaign enabled construction of the 11,000 square foot Delasky Education Center in 2012, as well as renovation of the original hospital building in 2014 to include a new cafe and ocean view massage rooms. A new ARE camp dining hall rises from the ashes of the building lost to fire in 2015. An extensive online resource was launched for ARE field volunteers across the country. The digitization of all backlist titles for ARE Press was completed. Ebooks in all formats, Kindle, etc., are now available for more than 100 Casey related titles. The ever growing list of Casey related audiobooks from Audible.com grew to include the A Search for God books. The organization received Trip Advisors 2016 Certificate of Excellence. 2017. A new membership benefit was launched for ARE members, the online Enlightenment series, offering videos, text, and an ongoing exploration of Casey materials. The ARE Health Center and Spa became the first facility in the United States to begin offering treatments with the AlphaSphere sound and color relaxation experiences. The ARE Library was renovated and the book collection surpassed 90,000 volumes. 2018. Because of the organization's commitment to sustainability and the environment, the ARE was one of the first of seven organizations in Virginia Beach awarded the Pearl Business Award, highlighting effective management practices for water, energy, sustainability, and waste management. The Edgar Casey Foundation hired a professional archivist, Jessica Newell, to preserve and manage the readings and historical records of ARE, ECF, and Atlantic University according to archival best practice. 2019 Filmed by Japanese director Tetsu Shiratori, a 90-minute documentary on the work of Edgar Casey entitled The Readings is launched in Japanese, English, Spanish, and Chinese to widespread acclaim. An extensive online speaker training program was added to the organization's ever-growing volunteer training resources. These materials are available to volunteers throughout the United States, Canada, and in dozens of countries throughout the world. 2020. In the midst of the coronavirus, ARE moves all of its educational and event programming online. The end result is an approximate 300% increase in the number of individuals who participate in an ARE conference program. During the coronavirus shutdown, the ARE Meditation Room is completely renovated and updated. Atlantic University is fully reaccredited by the Distance Education Accrediting Commission, DEAC, and a portion of the Casey Riley School of Massage Curriculum Online. Enrollment for the school increases in spite of the coronavirus. The Casey readings have been changing lives for the better since Edgar gave his first reading in 1901. Edgar Casey's living legacy, his organization the Association for Research and Enlightenment founded in 1931, has grown and changed over the decades, facing many challenges and overcoming numerous hardships, yet this great work still stands the test of time. From the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 to COVID-19, two world wars, stock market crashes, economic depressions, the closing of the Casey Hospital, the passing of Edgar himself, and so many other changes large and small, the Casey readings and their powerful message of oneness and fellowship continue to uplift and inspire thousands every day, individuals and groups of all sizes, classes, and creeds around the globe, across two centuries. Edgar Casey's association continues in this, its 90th year, 
and we ask you to join us in celebrating this life-changing work. Be glad you have an opportunity to be alive at this time, and to be a part of that preparation for the coming influences of a spiritual nature that must rule the world. These are indicated, and these are part of thy experience. Be happy for it and give thanks daily for it.